Friends, let's explore the Halloween windows of Main Street, USA, finding all the Disney decoration inspiration that we can discover together, as well as the candy-covered Buena Vista Street inside of Disney's California Adventure, and together, learn how we can decorate for Halloween just like Disney. Greetings, fellow citizens of Disneyland. Bricky here. Today, what do you say? Let's look at all the windows on Main Street USA and Buena Vista Street and see what Halloween decorations we can easily replicate on our own and decorate for Halloween the Disney way. Our first tip is Halloween candy, telling story with delicious seasonal treats. Here we see some pumpkins, but what's inside of the pumpkins is what tells the story. Cake pops, candy sticks mixed with some confetti, bringing on the orange and black and letting everybody know that the Halloween season is back and a great excuse to bring back that old candy bucket. Now, you may not have a miniature train set going around Rock Candy Mountain, the attraction that was originally going to go where It's a Small World and the Matterhorn's at, but what you might have opposite of this is a way to get your hands on an old gingerbread house. Coming up later in today's video, we have lots of DIY Disney-inspired projects you and the family could do, but let's do a DIY project right now. Get your hands on an old gingerbread house, sit around with those that you love, and decorate it as terrifying as menacing as possible. Get some Halloween suckers and lollipops, put those around to make a scary forest that surrounds your home. This could be a fun thing to do while you sit around and maybe have a Halloween movie that everybody can enjoy on in the background. And as the grand finale, take your gingerbread houses and make a little Halloween town. Here you can see Disney is using candy and mulch to create this really fun vignette of Halloween stories. Maybe bust out the Christmas tree and decorate it for Halloween and put your little town at the base of it or take over an old end table that you have in the home. Obviously you couldn't do it outside with all of the candy, but you could take your hand at telling a story like this derailing train or the pumpkin water tower that reigns over this little Halloween town. Flex your creative muscles, tell a story, find old props and toys that you have sitting around the home and have a good time. Look at this rolling hill, carved out of wood, decorated with a little bit of railing and some old sticks that look like trees. Making your Halloween town will not only be fun, but it'll also make great memories. Think about creative things that you have around the home that you could put candy inside of to set the tone like this old toy train that the cargo is Halloween candy. But unfortunately that train derailed and it never made it to Halloween town. And some say on nights like this one tonight, you can still hear the sound of the train screeching as it rolled off the tracks. Like I said, we have a lot more DIY things you can do at the end of this video, but I wanted to give you one early just to get your imagination going. Just to get you thinking about how you and the family could have some of the Disney fun at home and get even more pumped up for your visit out to the park for the Halloween season. Maybe you have a ticket to Oogie Boogie Bash or just your own local neighborhood trick-or-treating. If you're like me, the artistry and design of Disneyland very much inspires me and I like to take that inspiration into my own personal life and have my own annual pumpkin festival for one. Because I can't invite Beth because then she starts counting all the candy and takes all the fun out of things. So I have to build my own Halloween town and then I have to eat it in privacy like every other adult does. Seriously though, comment below. Have you ever made a Halloween gingerbread house or a candy haunted mansion of your own? Love the use of all the candy out here in the lawn and that they also made their very own signs. Could be a really fun project. Another fun family oriented thing to do is to do some Halloween cutout cookies and take some of them and turn them into ornaments that you could easily hang in your window or from your very own Halloween tree. My recipe is eat one, hang one, eat one, hang one. Love this bat. Such a fun little thing that you could do. Nothing that has been seen here would cost that much money to do, but would create such valuable memories of Halloween 2022. Skulls, books, and candles, oh my! Our second Disney decorating tip is to take lots of similar items and stack them around to make vignettes that tell a little story. One of the things that I noticed they used the most was skulls, books, and candles, oh my! 
If you look at this assortment of items using books as pedestals and sprinkling in other items on these stages that you just created, creates lots of different vertical sight lines, which makes a small space feel like there's a lot happening. A great thing to do on a table in your home or maybe on a bookshelf that you want to clear out for the Halloween season. So maybe you don't have a skeleton sitting around. Well, you do have a skeleton, but you're probably using it right now to live. But look at this window display where they took lots of creepy illustrations. You could print things out, search for things on the internet, take some of your favorite posters, and make a little ensemble of different items that have the season just right. Or even make your own labels to put on vintage bottles so that it looks like there's a scary potion sitting on the shelf in the room that you like to hang out in during the Halloween season. Vintage bottles, lots of fun illustrations and posters clustered together could create the vibe in a very small space. Go over to Pinterest, find some of your favorite images and make a collage. Color printouts aren't that expensive these days and it'd be nice to put together a little something fun. And when creating a vignette, use items of lots of different heights. They're using books to scale the skull up above all of its counterparts in this group setting of Halloween vibes. Clear some space off of a shelf, put up some of your Disney collectibles, some of your favorite spooky things, or maybe even take a candle and burn it halfway down on top of a plastic skull or something fun that you find at the thrift store. Maybe find some old perfume canisters. The more colors, the more shapes, the different heights that you have will create a deep pocket of inspiration and storytelling, even on the smallest shelf or tables in your home. And then decorate your skulls. Maybe find an old Halloween mask to put on top of a plastic skull or an item that you found. Think of every piece in your collection as a character and all of the characters are coming together to tell a story. This practice will free you from over-focusing on one item. Finding lots of different items, but stacking them together in different heights will create a lot of depth and fun for people to check out and look at when they come over to your house or place of business around the fall season. Head out to the flea market, head out to the thrift store, buy a bunch of fun junk, cluster it up, and tell your story. Maybe add in some old fabric and some traditional Halloween decorations next to your ensemble that's telling the story that you want to tell where every item has a memory attached to it that you'll always remember. So far, I haven't seen anything that would be a bank buster. Like a lot of affordable items just stacked together, put it together in groups in smart ways where you can easily decorate your home, your office for Halloween or for a Halloween party. I also like the idea of trying to find things that are themed around you and your family, your personality, so that the windows represent you and your version of how you would celebrate Halloween. Another affordable tip, take one of your Halloween masks from the past and use it for a decoration. Put it on the end of an old chair sitting in a room or maybe around your workspace. Sit some old mask around wherever it is that you work or just go buy some cheap plastic mask that you would never wear but might make for a good decoration. Shout out to Rob Roscop. And as you look around this little office space, you can see add a little candy, maybe a small pumpkin. Maybe even frame an old timey photo of people that you don't know that just look certifiably creepy. Old Mask and New could add a little bit of boo to you. Boo! If I scared you, you gotta subscribe. Friends, if you're enjoying today's video, I would urge you, please subscribe to the channel so I can keep making video content like this and keep giving you tons of Disney tips and tricks to make your next visit even better. Now, many of you I know over the years have been working on a big collection of Disneyland merchandise, and I'd like to suggest maybe doing something unlike this window. I mean, it's pretty obvious. All the merchandise stacked around, not a lot of creativity. But sprinkling it around a room, adding in some of the other things that are on our list, makes it feel more real. Or maybe go even a step further and take some of your merchandise that's themed around the Haunted Mansion or Nightmare Before Christmas and add in some of the other things on our list. Put it all together in a collection, melt down some candles, maybe go buy some props or go out to the thrift store. Get those old books, get the old vintage bottles we've talked about and create a little vignette that tells more of one of your favorite Disney stories. 
and let me know what is your favorite Disney spooky or scary or evil story. Because there's a lot more than just taking the merchandise and sitting it out on a table like this. Be creative with your Wilson Phillips action figures. Have a great time with your toys. You've been collecting it. It's time to use it. Or maybe get something new. As Bobby Chapek says about Disneyland merchandise, you could have 999 pieces, but there's always room for one more. Fall colored flowers add a very subtle way to put the vibe around whatever you're trying to decorate, whether it's just a shelf in your house or a whole display in your business. Over in Cars Land, using all these different orange and yellow flowers really brings this display together. So you can imagine if you already have that place in your home or your office where you have all your favorite keepsakes, just putting flowers of these colors all around all of your normal decorations would add so much fall fun to something that you look at all year. Frontierland has the vintage Halloween style cutouts, but with flowers weaving all around the flat items to add in more texture and depth. If you watch my guide to Halloween shopping, I forgot to film inside the Pioneer Merchantile. I woke up in the middle of the night, I was like, oh God, I forgot to shop. Thank you, Disneyland nurse, for also reminding me that I forgot it. Fall colored flowers is a friendly way to remind ourselves we've almost made it through another year and lucky that we're not looking up at flowers, if you know what I mean. All right, this is my favorite category and I apologize for keeping it to the end, but I gotta try to get you people to watch. I love DIY projects, do it yourself. And my favorite thing that I saw was this. You take an old bird cage and you put something inside of it spooky, like these plastic bats. Something unconventional that you wouldn't expect to see inside of a bird cage, like a skull or a spider. But these bats, playing off the idea of a bird cage, but it's a bat because it's Halloween, and then adorned with these really nice, big Halloween orange bows. I love it. And then over here, we see the same idea, but with a pumpkin smashed inside of the cage. Not the most expensive way to decorate and wouldn't take a ton of your time. This could be done in an afternoon and a fun afternoon at that. Also look at the relabeling of this old canister. Go to the thrift store, find an old canister, go home, do some graphic design, make your own label, take it to the office, sit it on the corner of your desk, make a conversation piece and next to it, put something weird in a bird cage. Another fun one would be to make a Halloween wreath. I don't think this would be an incredible amount of work, but would have a nice payoff. And now this one is a little bit more labor intensive, but you can get lots of fun designs off the internet that you could download and print out. But Disney does a really great job with their store display windows, but you could do this in your home, office, or even out in your front yard or on your patio if you found great designs that you had a way to either cut out of wood or take to Kinko's and have them printed out on foam core. But see these fun characters? They stand because of this trick right here. Just create two X's in the base of whatever you're trying to make and it'll stand up. That X will be enough to support whatever thing that you make. And if you do it outside, just make sure that both planes of the X are inside of the soil. Maybe cut them a little bit long so there's a little bit below the design to go down to give you four or five inches in there so that it'll stay sturdy. But there are tons of character templates that you can find online that you can download in high resolutions, use a projector to project it over on whatever substrate you're gonna put the design on or have it printed out professionally at a service like Kinko's. Here we see the same idea, but just flat down from the top of the ceiling with the spiders. And was that an eyeball or was it a moon? But anyways, you can make your own signs and in the process, your own good times. Now this one's a little bit more abstract, I'll admit. You're not gonna be able to fabricate a pumpkin tire. But are there things that you love that you could paint to look like a pumpkin? Like if you're a sports family, could you make a pumpkin out of a basketball or a baseball? Maybe take that old broken skateboard and put a face on it, paint it orange and stick it out in the yard so it looks like a zombie skateboard back from the grave. I'm going to do that one. But this is just a fun idea of take something and try to create a pumpkin from it. And then if you are going to do some carving pumpkins, don't forget, put your family's personality into the pumpkin. Maybe come up with a theme, your favorite Disney characters, your favorite Star Wars characters, your favorite Pixar characters, your favorite members of KISS, and this one right here paying tribute to Louis Armstrong who played on the Mark Twain. 
it'll be fun to see you and your family's interest reflected in pumpkins. One last one that I love, old timey ads printed out and put on the bottom of a box. This is an easy one afternoon item that could be fun to look at. I hope these DIY projects inspired you to think of a way where you could celebrate Halloween the Disney way and have fun with the ones that you love in between your next trip out to the Disneyland Resort. All right, now that we've all been stoked on all these different Disney decorating tips, let's look at the stuff that the pros do that is out of our scope. The Brakes Motel over inside of Cars Land is one of the best subtle details. This is in the lobby of the Cozy Cones Motel. It is something that 99.99999% of guests will never see, but we're not most guests. The Brakes Motel, a play off of the Bates Motel and be in the cozy cones that we're standing around, but adorned in this grayscale Tim Burton-esque look. That's Disney decorating magic. Over on Main Street, look at this collection. All of the practices that we've talked about put together in a masterful way. Everything we've talked about today exists in this one vignette. The layering, the composition, all of the colors, the tone. Oh God, not my friend Turtle. They took out Turtle. Damn you, Disney decorators, for killing the one good thing in Frontierland. Next year, I will burn a candle on your skulls and frighten you prematurely. But look, the stack books, the various different bottles and vases all put together with the tarot cards just to add a little bit of mystique. Fantastically done. Looking at it from a distance, this is a great assortment of Halloween items. And if you look in there, there's not a pumpkin there's not any off-the-shelf Halloween decorations, just a lot of intrigue and suggestion that brings us into the holiday. What's this beast that lurks around Refreshment Corner? You can see the light bulbs blinking in disarray. What is this beast? Oh, it's just a real weird looking cat. And his crow friend being like, yo, what's up, cat? You ready for Halloween? Yeah, I'm ready for Halloween. Ready to mess up these cupcakes, if you know what I mean. I feel like his voice would be like, Master, I've made you cupcakes, Master. But standing on top of these creepy flower canisters, it's a gluten nightmare. Really great window of lots of fun treats next to the candy shop. And then this is the best in show because it is so subtle. Look around at this one. At first, I didn't think that it was a Halloween window. These are just women. They are not witches. But as I looked around at the crystal ball and all of the subtle decorations, the subtle fabrics and patterns, all monochromatic with gold pops, they were witches. They were witches all along. We burned the wrong people at the stakes. There's their hat for the trade. They were witches and they were in our plain sight the entire time. This is a masterful window. This is the best in show. And those are the witches that are coming for us all. <laughs> I have to admit, I'm a known premature frightener. Friends, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you learned a couple of lessons. And if you want to check out more Disney content around Halloween, check out this playlist over here. It has all of my Halloween content in it and so much more to come. Thank you to Club 1313 for making today's video possible.